The <laughs> recording has started. <clears throat> uh, and there's no intro to this campaign, so we'll just go directly to our shiny happy faces. Shiny happy people are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Broken asshole. <laughs> Okay. Good evening. I <laughs> filters up. Uh, good evening, and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents the Demon Watch campaign. This is episode eighteen. I'm your DM and host Marty, joined by Adam and Ahmed. How is everyone doing? Life is killing me slowly. It's uh, you'd you'd think that uh, things would be easier when my wife's currently um on a business trip in uh, Texas. She's mm. in El Paso right now. Um. I thought that it would be like relaxing and stuff, but apparently making a house do things and dog stuff and work stuff and everything at once. Oh, yeah. Then you have dude. to feed yourself. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, having dogs is just like having kids. Yeah, we'll, well see yeah, about that. Dogs are kind of like <laughs> training children, aren't they? We'll see about that. Good yeah, well, they're supposed to be. Um,. <laughs> says people who don't own kids. Says people. Do, do you own kids? Yes. Is this yes? You, that's at this, at this age, you, you own you kids. Own yeah. Them, yeah. yeah. I can go and sell them right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell us how you really feel, Ahmed. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I love the shit out of them. <laughs> I love my children. <laughs> 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 no, they're good kids. I- I'll complain, but they're so awesome. Like, my kid was playing... Uh, I started playing D&D with him, actually. You see, he's five. He he has... he has. This is the... Ver- so this is what I started doing with him. Um, he has Pokemon cards. Mm-hmm. Right? But he can't tell the difference between Pokemon cards and Magic cards. So I just go my, give him a whole bunch of whatever I could find that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a bunch of random ass cards. <laughs> Anyways, so 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 I'm like, okay, uh, play your card. You're walking down the street, and then this monster pops up. It's like an ogre, and it's gonna. He it wants to bite you. What are you gonna do? I'll use this card. I'm like, okay, roll the dice. Who's higher? What? Which number is higher? Oh, okay, the twenty wins. Yay! Keep going, kind of thing. So I'm introducing him to numbers. What happens D&D. if he didn't beat the ogre with his Pikachu? <laughs> oh, uh, his rogue in the shadows friend comes in. <laughs> it's the mysterious stranger the perk from DM. Fallout. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> his head explodes. Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh. His guts f- flow out in front of your feet. He dies. Congratulations, child. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not stripping them at all. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> no, obviously they don't get that, but... <laughs> that's what's in my head. Anyway. I'm just suggesting the, uh, <clears throat> the... The chat dialogue box. Just give me a second here. There we go. Overlays. Sure. Yep, yeah, because I was... For me to see... Just, just trust me, I was doing a thing. Alright, so where um, did we leave off last game, Ahmed? Do you remember? Marty, the chat is like... A minute behind. Yeah. But like, like the stream is like is like a minute behind. Just saying. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. No, it's usually like ten the, seconds. The maybe. traffic is pretty heavy. The stats that came up with all the servers looks like there's a lot of jitter and a lot of. Uh, okay. Okay, that's cool. Yep. Uh, so, say Levy. Um, Ahmed, your recap of last session. Uh, last. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I told you earlier, I don't know <laughs> what I did yesterday. All right, so last game, episode ago? 17, Ashes of Swordborough. We played on the 9th of February. Um, Ventarin, Elden, and Lan investigate Topaz Solutions, a local alchemy shop noted for, noted on the cultist lists. Ventarin yeah. deals with the Ash Ravens, a local gang. Icon speaks with Hadrian about... Uh, about um, Inquis- Inquisitor and uh, Crusader caches throughout the city. Phi spies upon Ebenezer, suspicious of his nature. And I think we left off with you guys waiting around for Phi and Icon to complete their uh, their research so that you can go and attack a place called um, the Tower of Estrad, uh, which uh, you believe has uh, connections to the cult. Now, to recap what the tower is, the Tower of Estrad is, or was once owned by the city itself, 
and used as a research laboratory um, uh, for um, uh, research laboratory for uh, for friendly wizards. A couple of years ago, however, the leader of the research laboratory um, was ousted. So since then, maybe it's been in in the hands of the cult, or or maybe something has been going on. Um, there was a request by one of the wizards or the survivors at Defender's Heart. His name um, is. Where is he? Where's this token? His name is Quendis Oral. Quendis Oral is the head of the Blackwing Library, which is the same library that um, you guys visited when you first came to the surface, and it's where Aravashniel came from. Mm -hmm. The library has ties to an organization called Adam. It is the uh, uh, the Rift Wardens. The Rift Wardens. So yes. an inter. Galactic is probably the, a bad word. A, a, a... The keepers of time and keeping the discontinuities from overtaking us. Sure, you, you suspect that, they, they, that they're on multiple worlds and that they may guard against uh, incursions or, or things that would affect the outer plane. The outer planes. Yeah, if you try to go back in time to, to, to have sex with your mother, they'd be the ones to say, Nabra. Don't do that. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> wow. <It's> not right. <laughs> Is that where every every time uh, uh, time loop goes for you? Okay. I, I suppose <laughs> it's it, it's inevitable, isn't it? I watched I watched uh, the uh, Back to the Future. I know how this works. You go back into time, and then you end up trying to get your dad to, to sleep with your mom. It's weird. Um, Predestination is the movie that you should watch because they close that loop even more. Predestination? Yep. They, Damn, they Chewbacca. Even more close. <laughs> watch the movie. <laughs> huh. <laughs> watch the movie. And thanks for the uh, the host, uh, uh, Chrysosphere. Uh, it's good to see you guys out. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's where we left off. Um, I believe that there was some research that needed to be done. Were you in the middle of some research, uh, Fi? Uh, I believe we actually just finished it up. Okay, so you scribed some spells, you created your handy haversack, and you were going to inscribe some formulas. So there was no actual research that you, that you committed. His version of research was copying, 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 copying. Yep. Are you going to wait around for Icon and Chase to finish their research, or are you going to go and hit the Tower of Estrad without them? How... I think we were leaving without them. How much... They've got, like, what, five days left? They have uh, seven days remaining. Yeah, we're going to hit without them. You're going to go without them? Okay. We, we're we going to go without the training oh, wheels. This is going to hurt. Come on! What, what is your limit to casting? I can do a cure light! Like... <laughs> yep. Bless. Yep. Oh. Okay, so oh, that's uh, two days cool. after. It looks like um, if it's really scary, we might run away. That is an option. Okay, <laughs> I will make note of that. <laughs> We've been doing it recently, so why not? <laughs> We've run away before. We'll do it again. <laughs> In the last episode of the other campaign. So um, each each the least important character to 90, keep alive. Each season has ninety days. So this is actually autumn the first. Um, <laughs> Good time. Um, summer the ventieth and autumn the first. Hadrian, Ventarin, Eldon, and Lan lead a small group of warriors and priests to secure the South Sordborough district. And then Fi completes crafting of his handy haversack. Is and there a holiday for autumn the first? Uh, yeah, we would probably, it's probably the beginning of harvest season, so there's probably, like, something called, like, the first harvest, um, the oh, first serious. harvest, <laughs> uh, celebrations are muted. <laughs> it's a different kind of harvest this season, poor the bastard's hard. <laughs> But good, good question. Uh, yeah, so the first harvest is celebrated um, uh, more so uh, religiously this time around, where everyone gives thanks for what it is that they have. Um, 
you do know that um, Defender's Heart has made contact with with like surviving farms and that sort of thing that were just outside of town that weren't as badly hit. Like there are there are survivors in the city that like outside of the city. The demons seem no. to really really target the city because that's where the high population density was and maybe where all the treasure yeah. was. <clears throat> there yeah. there are rumors that the demons have dragged people off deeper into the world wound to go and celebrate to their victory. So they may be having a different sort of uh, first harvest festival. <clears throat> oh, that's oh oh. Yeah, not the first. Good. The first harvest. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's also. Um, it's quite clear that the demonic storm is over the vicinity of the capital city, a thousand miles to the south, and okay. that um, that fighting is fierce. Like you get reports that that the demons are all fighting there. Yeah. But, um, the demons may times. have they, the demons may have encountered a bit more resistance than they expecting, but but the fighting and destruction has spread definitely to the south by this point. Like they, huh. they, they kind of cracked through at Valderas, breached the demon wall, and then and then continued on to the south. And you guys are still we'll, mopping up the, the we, Yeah, we'll worry about going and kicking the demon storm in the bollocks once we've figured out if there's anybody, you know, family members and stuff are still, you know, yeah, so uh, <laughs> Fi still hasn't made it back to his own house. Uh, nope, full uh, of Hadrian orphans. Hadrian wants to make it back to um, um, to the remnants of the center part of the city where there may be survivors. Um, they highly doubt it at this point in time that much of the uh, Crusaders or the branch of the Inquisitors have remained. Uh, there, there are some but it, it appears that Hadrian is that was the highest ranking through um, um, through mostly seniority, which is kind of an odd thing. That's disturbing. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're in charge now. Oh, oh, but I just started. You get the sense yeah. that the most powerful paladin that remains is this. Um, uh, is this uh, female paladin, her name is Captain Irabeth Tira's Blade. Captain is in a very high title in the in the grand scheme of things. Um, and then from the sovereignty, Ventaran's kind of like the only <laughs> one. Uh, from a you go from the super mega epic dragon to some be low level half breed. Wee. <laughs> From the religious standpoint of Defender's Heart, it it it's hard to really tell. Um, however, there are rumors of um, of some of the temples faring better better than others in the in the city. Uh, in particular, if we go to the map, and we can share said map. The one that they're talking about. <laughs> Here's Defender's Heart. Where is it? Uh, this big great block that separated um, and kind of cleft in, in twain was the Saint's Burrow. And the All Saints Shrine apparently was able to not only survive the attack, but repulsed repeated attacks by demons. Um, so they may still be standing. We need to build more of those. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they've got a mythic unicorn. <laughs> We, we, those are strong unit. <laughs> those are the, yeah, exactly. I, I was I was a uh, reference to the other game, but but holy crap, <laughs> the unicorn, unicorns you want fighting against summon summon creatures um, and devils in general. But uh, yeah, so we left off at, at Defender's Heart. Uh, Icon is in the middle of prayer and chases, making uh, librarians' lives miserable as he's completing his research uh, into his spells. So it's just a group of you. Are, are you sure that's how bards are supposed to learn? He, he, he spends more time doodling. I, I Not that doodling is wrong, I'm just saying that they're not words or diagrams or shapes, they're more... Who are you having this conversation with, Fi? Doodles. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> they're doodles. Uh, he's... Uh, he's 
try it level well it would be Princess it'd either be Princess Nina, Icon, or um Ebenezer, who doesn't poop. Okay. Which is also <laughs> disturbing in its own right. So Ebenezer is has been staring <laughs> at um the same cue card that he's trying to fill up for a particular uh <clears throat> for a particular book and he's just been staring at it and he's he's not really responsive. Uh, Icon is uh, Icon is there. He 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 came up and I don't know, delivered tea to all the librarians or some some something kind of servile. He, he came up to go tea! Light spell! <laughs> 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 yeah, Made from the like holiest one. waters I've of... En <laughs> I've enjoyed this particular brand of tea. It seems to open the mind like dawn in the morning. If you really want to open your mind, I do have some methods of improving the general openness <clears throat> of the um, the inner, you know. He nods with a with a slight smile that curves across his lips, a knowing smile. Although if you open it too much, it kind of feels like it's all the way inside out. And that's. Uh, I know I must do repairs on your body every single time you do open your mind. Uh, it is a good yeah. thing that Icon is here, just like the sun on this world. It can yes. be relied upon. Um. <clears throat> Fi's looking at him. He's having ideas. Okay, he he uh. he, he, he feeds you some tea. He's like uh. he's got this rattling. <laughs> he, he's not uh. a very good servant, but uh, he's got a, a rattling tray full of little. <laughs> By the time, of uh, course, we, he brought it here. All the tea is a little bit uh, a little bit uh, um, lukewarm. That's fine. Well. That's fine. Uh, so um, you'll uh, hmm. We are going to go to the tower, Strahd. And, um, if we don't come back, would you mind rescuing us <laughs> from whatever potentially delaying problem that we're having? <coughs> also, oh. keep your eye out for me telling you from an alternate path that like a letter or a symbol or a sign that I might be telling you to do something that's not the thing that I'm telling you to do because I might be trying to help you do things to help me help us save the future? I understand your burden, says Icon. Yes. So if the other me tells you to help me, then please help me. But if he tells you not to help me, then don't help me help you help him. Help him. But it, what if there's more than one other me? <laughs> if there's a, a bad... If the other me seems like a helpful other me and not a bad other me that might be trying to do bad things to, say, time or confluences of energy, this sort of thing. Don't listen to him, listen to the one that's trying to help. My arms are getting sore holding this tray, <laughs> Perhaps you should grab the cup that Nina has already chosen for you. You can see Nina and the butterfly is kind of sitting on the edge, sipping out of... Uh... Huh. Yeah, uh, he'll pick up the, the teacup. Okay. Huh. He, he, um... He rattles his way out of the room to serve other people. <clears throat> what do you think, Ebenezer? Mm. Mm. Uh, I thought so. What? Hello? Mm. Mm. It's you. Yes. Mm. What? Do you? Would you like some tea? Tea. Mm. It comes after S. And you can see that. Would you like some <laughs> herb-based liquid refreshments? 
You can see he might have been stuck on T and you helped him out by <laughs> writing a T down. <laughs> Chase, try not to get us kicked out. <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> I assume that you will succeed at whatever you're about to do, but I'm going to leave before I get good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not too sure where he's... Like... I, I don't know what he's doing or where he is, but I know he still plays with his goo rod, so... Right. <laughs> Um, find the Heflink, um, Elden, Lan, and Ventarin. Yeah, you, f you find them. Uh, so, um, Lan. <coughs> yeah, yeah, hey. What do you, what do you want, Elf? Uh, I, I'm actually bored. What, what, what's going on here? We, um, I would like to go take a look in the tower. Um, mm. I, I can relatively, somewhat reliably find traps that would be magical. Uh, I need a little help with the ones that are mundane. No problem. I got those. I'll Good. take care of those. Oh. I mean, like, I'll try to not take, set them off and just disarm, you know, like, you take a... It's okay. Oh, regard. Regard. Whatever. I hate you, Elf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fine. Watch it. Uh, it. Can you go through doors with your... You should... I, I believe you should uh, via the, the, the textbook writings, but the more... Hmm? Yes, I have not had a problem with walking through doors. That is not how my powers work. Doorknobs, however, are a tad annoying. <laughs> uh, if if I prepared um, an extract for you that uh, granted you um, limbs in sort of distributed like a human or elf or gnome, halfling, whatever. The thought is disturbing, at least. Um. You'd be able to scratch your own neck. Hmm. <laughs> you, see, you, see, you, see, you see the tumblers turning. <laughs> the <laughs> At the of something else, perhaps not. Uh, well, uh, later we'll what try. What I do with said limbs? Aside from open doorknobs that I don't know. Oh, well, I was originally thinking opening doorknobs. Um, he he they could be behind you. Uh, whoa. And then goes back to where he kind of was. Right. Um, <laughs> I... <laughs> That's my animal companion. <laughs> Smarter than You're I his am. paladin. <laughs> I know. That's sad. Uh, so, yeah. Uh... He's funny. He can hop around. <laughs> says, uh, says Mina. He is. He's a little bit serious sometimes, though. Um, knowledge local on Estrad. I think I might have done this before. I just want to. Um, I think you have already. Yeah. I don't think uh, you've uh, Right. I just. I, I need. Can you give me the Coles Notes version of... Uh... Did, didn't I do that already? Oh, it's, uh, so the, the, those are all the details? It's They, they did... The, give me a second. Doing, doing the bad magics. <laughs> <laughs> I know why we're going from the... Uh, from that point of view, I mean the, the family of Strahd. Um, or do I have that messed up? Hmm... 
yeah, it's, it's not a family. It's just called the Tower of Estrad. Uh, no. It was a place that the city used to do research um, for friendly yeah. wizards. It also had crafting facilities. Um, yes. And it was marked on the map. It was marked on the map. It was... Mm, a library research laboratory owned by the city and the owner or the people the person who run it um something happened to him about two years ago and um yeah that was the last time that you sort of really paid attention to yeah. it it, it yeah, the name of the tower appeared on the letter uh that you found in the cultist den underneath the city yeah and i was i was having a a brain discombobulation between that and the uh, Niz Nizirian Manor. The Nizirian uh, Manor. Yeah. yeah, I was like, is this Although just a creepy it, necromancer? It Nizirian Manor, the um, uh, Topaz Solutions, and the Tower of Strahd were the three places that were mentioned. Yeah. Now, um, I, I, what I was saying is that the wizard wanted you to get a particular volume of, um, of, of research while you were there. So there's not only just to go there and figure out what's going on. There, the wizard supposed to bring uh, back a book. Yeah, he wanted he wanted a book, and it had to do with um, the creation of rods, magical rods. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, so retraining feats. Um. There might also be books that act as retrainers. That <laughs> you don't have to find someone to. Uh, that retrain the feet like you, you could find the lore about like here's the lore about creating rods or here's the lore about you know that is magic. really useful for i need to craft this thing but, i need a i need a rod i don't want to craft rod all the time i just so, need craft rod to make the stupid rod so if i has thought about it a little bit and he's like well this man wants to learn about crafting rods you're like that's well, what that, this volume probably is. It, it was a very specific volume. Yeah. Uh, we haven't really shared spell books. I no. don't think. Nope. Um. Did he? The person who asked me about this book did. Did I talk to him? He's the the head he, of that. He, he's, uh, he's he's the head. That chief you, librarian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is uh his visage is on map tools. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the craft rod. So he, uh, Fi is just standing there going, he might be able to cast fifth circles. <laughs> that would. Hmm. <laughs> huh. It's handy to know. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, right. Um,. He also seemed really annoyed at you for for some reason. Yeah, he doesn't like me. Uh, he he didn't. He was really uh, he didn't like a lot of things. Uh, perhaps the rod crafting book would help unstarch his robes, um, or a nice we could bring him a pair of silk underpants. D Nina thinks you're funny, so she goes tee hee. But the rest of the the rest of the warriors <laughs> rest of the warriors are just given the we need we should be going yes have you prepared properly I believe so have you prepared for an excursion into the city uh... Elden you yes. prepared your spells yeah all yep. three of them <laughs> it's it's gotcha. different going from forty spells a day to three. <laughs> different campaign. Campaign. Right. Yeah. You got this. You can do this. Um <laughs> yeah, you can manage this. Yep. <sighs> uh yes. Then we should get moving. Okay, uh, I'm gonna switch to the uh the city map view. Post Terran's down. We've got Defender's Heart. We'll use Ventaran's token as the uh, as the map. Uh, where are you guys going? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, what time of day are you leaving? We're leaving oh. at like oh. 9 a.m., 10 a.m. 
Okay. Um, the weather is uh, uh, a bit overcast today. Uh, uh, okay. We perfect. We go. Uh, I'm just taking a quick peek along the wall. Uh, well, I think. Uh, the gashes are the bad stuff, and these are traversable, correct? Yep. Yep, okay. So it's kind of... Okay, you want to stop just a, uh, about four or five spaces back. All right, I need perception checks from you guys. No! No, Marty! Oh, that, that's a little bit of an overreaction. <laughs> uh, I'm not giving you one. Alright, um... Bursa Pianist. 23, and... That's geared. <laughs> uh, and 9. <laughs> not geared, you're fired. <laughs> My job is not to see. My job is to stand in front of things. Sixteen. <laughs> uh, Lan Ninsky. Sixteen. Uh, no, Lan hasn't done his yet. Well, it's not much better. Twenty. Fuck. <laughs> so, All right, Beauregard. <laughs> yeah, Beauregard. Yeah. yeah. So is Nina if you really Nina, want. Nina, yeah. I'll, I will so roll far, Nina. 23 is the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the guys. So 23. 23 it is. Okay, so there are three <laughs> things. They are in stone. They are in stony areas. And I need their. Bring me their flesh. And, and then send and it to the other campaign. Feet, and they're at least 60 feet away. So. Okay, we don't see them. Uh, 28, 27, and 43. Are there stealth checks? Um. I, I'm not, uh. I probably should spend it, but I'm not going to spend the mythic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll deal with the surprise. 23. If they're right in front of you, you it looks like you would have seen them. This is Phi that yep. rolled the 14, right? Holy crap. Phi has got a plus 14 perception check? I see everything. Al alchemist. Oh, okay. Not just wizard. Alchemist. Got it. Alchemist. Got it. Look, at the, look at that man's pupils. Look at those pupils. Yeah. He sees yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, start tracing your path. Move only, like, maybe four or five. Um blocks at a time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Keep on going. Yeah. Now you're, yeah. you're gonna look for a way down. Is that where you're Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. That looks like a big cliff. That looks traversable. Yeah, you managed to find as you're climbing down. Yay. <laughs> um I'm gonna use your passive uh perceptions on this one. They, they've started following you. And, uh... Um, Where's our lunch going? <laughs> Aww. Too bad Chase wasn't here. Chase is... Oh, that's his stealth. Uh... uh it's... It's Fi. It's Fi who, who you look out for. Wow. Okay. And they're gonna try to sneak right up to you guys. Uh, 30 feet above you, however. So... Uh, 3, 1d20, plus... 17 plus distance. They're trying to beat Fi's. 35, 22, and 39, which means Fi gets to act in the surprise round. And I get to act anyway in my surprise round. I always act in the surprise round. And you're round. the only one that gets to act in the surprise round. Okay, you guys are in the state of climbing and kind of moving down uh, uh, throughout one of these rented, uh, kind of destroyed streets, picking your way through the rubble, trying to find your way down to flat ground, when three gargoyles carrying stones that are dropping them on your heads uh, are kind of coming over the edge uh, behind you. They're kind of, they're, they're flying through the, the sky and they're dropping, uh, they're dropping stones in your general direction. I'm just going to okay. move to the conversation layer. 
And here's your group. And I guess we need to roll initiative. No, Marty! <laughs> no! <laughs> yes, Marty, yes! <laughs> Uh, it's it's like you forgot that there are encounters and 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 bad creatures in you. I don't want to fight anything. <laughs> I don't want to fight anything. Uh. It, Eld, Eldon has given up on his ways. Uh, so Fi is ready to rock and uh, uh, he's ready to rock two times. Okay. Uh, so how did the boys fare? So ten. Okay. All right. And Borgard goes first. Ah, oh, shit. Borgard goes as mine. Damn it. Six. Okay. Um, the gargoyles that were watching you from the uh, from the top of the tower, or so the top of the wall that you were traveling near, um, yep. come and say hello. Drop some rocks on your head. Hey guy. Hey guys. Okay. Uh, Eldon, would you roll? A ten. I'm trying to edit the workbook. Uh, gargoyles rolled a nineteen. Well, I think five still goes before them. They fit a plus six. What did five? Uh, roll? Five rolled a twenty, okay. which means they go first. It's a bunch of bulls. This is bull dookie. By by just a <laughs> just a smidgen. This is bull dookie. Dookie, <laughs> okay. I say. Uh, Lan, what did you roll? Nine. Edit in browser. Why aren't you editing? Okay. And Ventarin? Uh, Ventarin rolled a thirteen. And then Chase and Icon aren't there to have rocks dropped on their head. All right, okay. Hey. All right. I don't think we've ever we, we haven't we I don't think we've done this in a long time. Uh, had have to look up the falling uh, falling objects rule. Falling objects rule. Yep. You know, Ochre's gonna do the same thing, right? Right. So. Oh, it depends. It depends if we like these rules. <laughs> <laughs> I drop a five million pound rock. <laughs> Get the elf and the dragon. Just as characters <laughs> take damage when they fall more than ten feet, so do they take damage when they hit by falling objects. Okay. Conversation. I'm in the conversation. And the street dragon is dropping shit on my head. Shouldn't they be above us? If it falls less than 30 feet, it deals half illicit damage. If an object falls more than 150 feet, it deals double illicit damage. Uh, dropping an object on a creature requires a ranged touch attack. Such attacks generally have a range increment of 20 feet. Excuse me. Okay, so they're they're really only dropping them from, like, 100 feet up. Um, okay. If the object falls on a creature, instead of being thrown, the creature makes a reflex save DC 15. No, no, they're targeting. So, okay. So you can either attack a square, or you attack a creature. Using their real AC. Using their real AC. So flat-footed touch ACs with range increments um, for small objects that they're carrying. Uh, flat-footed... No, it should be armored ACs if they... it's not a reflex save. It's a ranged touch attack. So you're saying Ukrit will be doing this in the future? <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> okay. Ranged touch attack. Okay. Okay, man. Well, you hit Elden. If an object falls on a creature <laughs> instead of being thrown, that creature takes a DC reflex save 15 to have the damage if he is aware of the object. Ooh, Len is good at this. Oh, that's Plus so one weird. from above. Okay, um, it's it feels like you you get a reflex save if you're aware of the object falling on you. Well, it's the the word aware is interesting because you usually get a reflex save no matter what for anything. Right. Um, and then that statement there makes it sound like you don't get a reflex save if you're flat footed, which means Uker auto mercs things with infinite range and dropping large objects from space. No, no, you don't even it's, have it's to drop it. You just have to arc thrown, it. Right? You have to arc it. it. No, that would be thrown. Damn it. Um, okay, so they're dropping um, small objects on top of you, which are their rocks. 
and uh, let's see who they're attacking first. So as you guys are climbing down, um, let's see, there's one, two, three, four of you, plus a dog, a medium-sized dog, so five. Uh, let's see. Uh, Elden, no, sorry. Lan, Fi, Ventaran are getting uh, rocks dropped on them. Okay. So the first one is Lan. Uh, they're about 100 feet up, so that's minus uh, 8. And they have plus um, plus 8. So it's just a d20 roll versus land. This is your flat-footed um, touch AC. So what's my flat-footed? My touch is 26. Flat-footed is no dex. You get your wisdom. Six misses. So something tried to drop a rock on you and... <laughs> oh, what the, nearby you. What the uh, it's a melon sized rock. And then uh, Lafai from 100 feet up. Touch AC of 12. Uh, my touch AC is. Uh, Where's that plus 2 come from? One second. It might be. Well, it's, it's 12 at most. Um. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, no, it's that 11. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm not flat-footed. I just always act in surprise. Okay, uh, there's a there's a rock that glances off your shoulder for six damage. Okay. And then uh, the last one is on Ventarin. AC 15. Yeah, it hits flat-footed touch. touch. It, it hits... Okay. So they open up the salvo by dropping a bunch of rocks on your heads. Uh, this one smashes against your, your armor plate and explodes. I think Fi gets a saving throw because he was aware of the attack because he was aware yeah. of, in the initiative. So he does get a reflex save. This is really weird because people in full plate can never break through a like a wall. Because <laughs> you just you drop things <laughs> off the top and win. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, 20. Okay, so you, instead of uh, taking, what was it, 6, you take 3. Your, uh, your diviner senses allowed you to scramble out of the way as uh, as the gargoyles uh, drop rocks on you guys. And uh, Ventarin <laughs> took 9? Uh, 9. Okay. okay, so they are essentially above you, but they're 100 feet above you. They're flying around, and I'm on the conversation layer. <laughs> oh, there they are. Whack! <laughs> right. They, they, look like, they look like devils or demons or something. Uh, big gray wings. Uh, the color of concrete, though. Um, Do they look like they're holding any more rocks? Um, yeah. Yeah, it does look like they've got um, um, maybe two more rocks uh, tied to ropes around their belt. Makeshift kind of hemp belts. It's like a rock with a bunch of ropes around it. They're kind of they, like they they've they've put some um, they've put some thought into this. Oh, I have a really big boulder at home in the other campaign. <laughs> We're gonna drop it on some bitches. It'll be <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yes, we're returning on uh, five. Yep. Uh, Tomatius, what's up? I oh, is I said that right. going to. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Casts mage armor. Why am I? Yep. Um, so these guys are higher than us. Yep. And then nobody else won the surprise round, so we go into the, the beginning of the first round, which means that they drop rocks and then continue flying forward. Uh, they fly forward and then drop rocks, unless they oh, quick is that, uh Yeah, okay, so if they hover, what is the uh, fly check on hovering? I think it's DC 15. Might be DC 25. You don't know off the top of your head? You're fired. Uh, I, it's DC 15. <laughs> I know, I'm not the one that's fired, but, but the player is. Uh, they're going to they're gonna attempt to hover because this is a good place to drop rocks from. Uh, they get a 32, a 30, and a 15 on their flight. I'll make it. Okay. Yeah. So they, they, that 15 was close. They, they, um, they hover, and then they, they drop more rocks on your head. Lan, you're still flat-footed. 
So you're going to get a rock. Okay. Uh, touch your C11. No. Okay. Then Taran, you look scary. Uh, nat 20. I can't be critted with that. It's not a... Or is it a... So you can crit range, with these two? It's a ranged touch attack, so yes. Alright, it doesn't crit, but... Uh, four is the... Um, no, the, con but, the confirmation. But we will see this. This this tactic will be seen again shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying it out in this campaign. <laughs> um, I'm like they're on top of a big tower. They're just going to fly around and drop rocks on your head. Uh, no, they'll have to go back after they run out. But seven more damage is as Ventaran is out in the middle of the street and just getting pelted by rocks. Uh, and then the last one, um, we're going to peg. Uh, he'll go, he'll just go for the same target. Five was a juicy target before. Nat twenty. A three to confirm. Okay. Uh, Does it confirm? Eight damage. No. Okay. Uh, ten on my reflex save. Okay. So you take eight damage. Um. <clears throat> I would spend a mythic point, but sorry, I don't think it's worth it right now. No. Okay, uh, it looks like that they have got one more it. ammunition left. Um, Phi? Uh, so, I will... Determined that floating all around you. <laughs> Dunk, one of them like made this ping noise as they hit Ventaran beside you. <laughs> Nina's yelling, "Look out!" <laughs> as Drox tumbling down towards your group. I will take a total defense action. <laughs> okay, this is not a bad action. Uh, Ventaran, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to use a swift action to cast a play on hands. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, right. some, you took some hits there, buddy. Yep. Um, All right, a chinny chin chin. Okay, and we're going to, I believe it's 2d6 for him right now. Yeah, it's 2d6. So six healing. Um, okay, Ventaran glows with a silvery light, and uh, Bahamut answers his prayer and re some of the, the bruises he's got. <laughs> And then he is going to... Oh, they're not within 30 feet. No, they're, 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 they're way up there. They're way up there. He will take a total defense action. Yes. He puts up his shield. Get ready to jump. <laughs> uh, Elden? Let's do this. So Elden's firing. Okay. Yeah. They found the range. Take my game. war sling. Take my war sling, and I'm going to. I'm using my. Yeah, I could probably hit these guys. <laughs> I could probably just hit them. 100 feet away is probably what second range increment for you. Um, actually, no, I think. So you have to excuse me. It's been like forever. No. Yeah, uh, it is. Has been. Current uh, range is 600 weeks. feet. Uh, Nope, sorry, that's the wrong character. Current range. There we go. I was like, that's not right. Mm. Kenny! Okay, Come on. there we go. Take that war sling and flip it, turn it, bop it. <laughs> <laughs> flip it, turn it, what was it. What was wrong with um, just freaking Simon? Like the... <laughs> Precise? No. Yeah. Okay. No. No. I don't have anything that's that's going to help are me. You that. aiming, it's, are this you aiming? This is my are... second. This is my second range increment. Yep. So minus <clears> two. Unless yeah. you have some twinky feet. Uh, no, I don't. So these guys are. Are these guys evil outsiders? No. They're not. They're not undead. So I'm taking this. I do not have blesser aid up. Okay. Um. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Oh, I'm not smiting evil. Shit. Are you smiting one of them? No, I'm not gonna smite. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna he use that same action for his divine strike. Right. <gasps> Yogurt. 
Oh, Sorry. plus ten. Oh, man. I'm going to have to use a no move you. action. Are you feeding probiotics to your dogs? <laughs> oh. Um, on accident. <laughs> on accident? No, I had an accident. Yep. There's the, uh... Damn it. All right. Fine. No, I, uh, uh, I, I made my own dinner as opposed to um, ordering out today. And when you cook the food yourself, the calorie content's way low. So I uh, figured out that it was like a thousand calories short let's, today. So, let's see how this goes. Yogurt. I'm going to rapid shot. We'll see how this goes. Get him. We'll see how this goes. What's up, Kenny? Uh, this is low, but meh. 25. AC 25, you hit one of them. I think it needs to make a fly check or descend. 14? Yes. Um, 14, I think, misses. <laughs> 14 misses. Okay. Uh, but it, it auto makes those fly checks. With a plus 11? Yeah. DC 10. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so yeah. It doesn't like it. It gets hit. It's two bullets. Okay. Is your, and... sling, is your sling stone magical? Yes. Okay. My my sling is magical. Bypasses DR. 1d20 plus... Uh, 1d6 plus 7. <laughs> my 1d20 sling. Uh, 11 damage. Did that hurt one of the gargoyles? I'm just going to pick one of them. Uh, gargoyle 2 got smacked by your uh, sling stone. And... Um, uh, Lan. Oregard's uh, readying an action to move like five feet over if like a boulder comes down. Uh, yeah, uh, that's actually pretty smart. So I'm gonna, yeah, to not be in the area where you're being attacked. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So so he's he's like, you're coming now. He's like, <laughs> like pop over, not dimension hop, just like move over. <laughs> that would suck for me. Uh, Lan is going to oh, take you, out because you're riding you're riding Beauregard at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Lan's gonna pull out his crossbow and he's gonna take a shot. Um, I think this is what's the third range increment. It's, it's it, wait, it's, no, it's a uh, hundred crossbow. It'll be it. it what size is it? Large or heavy? Uh, it's heavy. It's first. Boop, 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 boop. Um, no, I don't yeah, think it's isn't heavy. a crossbow heavy crossbow hundred feet? Heavy crossbow is 120 feet. Okay. I thought. No, I'm just making sure that it is a heavy crossbow. Um, it's a heavy crossbow. Woohoo! Okay. Let's okay. see how you take this. Who are you firing at? Uh, the one that was uh, recently injured. Okay. He has the same bonus. Oh, no, bl no bless. Len, Len pulls out a loaded heavy crossbow off of his back. Yep. Um, cannot power attack. No, this is just bad plus dex. Plus, if it's masterwork. No strength. <laughs> okay. Alright. All right, let's do this. I was <laughs> just saying things. <laughs> no strength. No, Correct. I missed. Okay, so you, you send a crossbow bolt sailing into, into some other neighborhood. You hope that it doesn't hit anyone. Uh, the gargoyles are going to make their, um, their checks to... Um... Well, actually... They're going to take a move up. Uh, they fly... As long as they go up. 130 feet up. Oh, I can still get them. <laughs> uh, they're at about 130 feet up, yep. So 130 feet higher or total? And then... What's that some altitude? Plane hits them. Yeah, they're slowly turning around. They're then going to use their second moves to kind of circle around your, your area. Okay. So they're flying around. They they, they have their last uh, piece of ammunition in their um, uh, in their grasp. You firing missiles back, like missile weapons back at them, just did seem to. Uh, perturb them, like you disturb their flying pattern. Huh. Uh, Fi? Ah, uh, knowledge. Gargoyle. Arcana? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 23. While they resemble winged demons, uh, gargoyles um, appear to be carved stone creatures. Um, 
if the, they were in a hall full of statues, they'd be hard to pick out uh, from real <laughs> ones. Aside from that, they're just sneaky, and you get a sense that they are... It would make sense that they're on the demon side from a morality point of view. They, they're flesh-eating kind of... Uh, they're monsters. Uh, is the way to describe them. They're horrible monsters, but they're not demons. Um, With a dizzying array of um, a variety to them, um, these seem to be... Uh, oh, DR10 magic is, is really the thing. That... They really, really think they're... sculptures... They're kind of magically sort of a species. Yeah. Yeah, monstrous human. Get a earth sub, sub, earth template, uh, which is weird. Go get a <laughs> tap Elden on the <laughs> horrible okay. things. Um, so you're looking up at them. I guess you're maintaining your full defense. Yep. Uh, Ventarin. I will use a swift action to. Um, uh, um, sorry. Uh, use a swift action to heal. Okay. Uh, five healing. Um, not, not great. Not terrible. And then we'll... take off his shield. Um, and as part of taking off his shield, draw his, uh, longbow. Alright. And then fire. Okay. I suggest we make it to cover. At 130 feet up, plus a little bit of distance, they are definitely in second range increment for you. Are you targeting yep. the same the same injured one, or are you targeting one of the other ones? The same injured one. Okay. Elden's still re repeating. Guys, I think we should get, get find AC some cover. AC 19. That's a hit. Um, uh, my bow it? is not the magic, and Fi didn't tell me about that. Okay, so subtract <laughs> 10 from the damage. Oh. No, you need to use a magic arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the arrow is just going to bounce off of it. <laughs> uh, minus one damage. Yeah, okay, so yeah, the arrow, you're like, yeah, you got it, and just could have sort of went, Tuck! it, it kind of bounced no, no, off no, of no, its no. back and, you, and went tumbling magic. down to the earth. He uses the magic weapon. You you just, the uh, bow is, it's, it's a nice bow. Just Elden? Uh, I'm not going to, what happens if I do my deadly aim? Yeah, a nine. Screw it. I'm going to try to hit one guy really well. Plus 15. Minus two. Oops. <laughs> Plus 13. <laughs> I'm back. Did you miss me? Yes. Walking child. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> so much so. What's up? Uh, AC 16 is a, uh, is a hit. Um, it's a hit? Yep. Holy yep. cow. All <laughs> right. They're not wearing armor. They've got thick skin. Ah, uh, ten damage. Ten damage. Take that. Uh, is it magical? Yep. Yes. Okay. The the thing uh, visibly loses a few feet of altitude as you hit in the back and maybe tear a hole through one of its wings. Same one. They're kind of bouncing around like they're really heavy. Like they're flapping their wings and they have to kind of uh, 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 big exaggerated flaps of their wings. Uh, you can hear them from a hundred feet away. Their wings flap. It's fucking my own. And then uh, uh, land. You've got Reloads. a. Oh, you you didn't use you didn't rapid shot. You just did the one. Lan? No, I just did one. No. Yeah, okay. Lan is Lan is now um, quickly as quickly as possible trying to reload the heavy crossbow, which is a full round action. Yes. Uh, the gargoyles. All right. So the one that's injured. Um, yeah, I, I guess they're gonna fly above you guys again and drop their last bit of ammunition. This time, all three of them are gonna drop their ammunition on Elden. Okay. Come on, Borgard, do your thing. Okay, well, Beauregard, you just sort of get him to move away, and because it's an attack roll, they continue to follow you and, and drop things on you. Um, All right. Let's do this! Let's do this! <laughs> so wait a second. Ah! What's Beauregard's movement? They, move, they moved uh, about 20 feet to move in to drop see. their... To drop their uh, and their they had block. to lose a little bit of altitude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His movement... It, 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 I guess it is a thing. You could ready an action to move when someone comes to attack 40, you. No, it's 40 yes. feet. It's 40 feet. Uh, so they are, um, they are a bunch of adventurers right now that are moving through a demon, um, uh, uh, like a post-apocalyptic demon, uh, demon attacked city. 
Um, they're being attacked by gargoyles that are uh, 130 feet above them. And uh, they're big dicks. And they're dropping rocks <laughs> down on their head. So they are trying 